Why do some Ravens fans give up on everything as soon as the team makes one mistake? Do Geno Stone, Nigel Warrior, Ardarius Washington, and Brandon Stevens pose more of a threat to Deshaun Elliott or Chuck Clark? With the unfortunate situation that the LJ Ford injury is, uh, should the Ravens bring in KJ Wright to replace him? These and much more on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subs a series where you can ask me any question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be part of it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons the patrons you can send it directly on patreon anybody that's thinking about becoming a patron wants to know how to become a patron wants to know how to leave being a patron you can go to patreon.com <laughs> Slash engraving vids. Either way, y'all know it's all love, man. I appreciate y'all. We got some great questions as we always do. Let's do it. First question came from Lynetta. Shout out to Lynetta. She's been supporting for a minute now. For a minute now. So I appreciate you. Thank you for that. She said, um, I have a question. Why do you think that the Ravens fans give up on the Ravens as soon as they make a mistake? I am just wondering. Thank you for all that you do. Ooh, wow. Um, I think, and it's not all Ravens fans, it's, it's, it's some. Because uh, for a lot of times when we see stuff that happens amongst Ravens fans, then we can think, oh man, that's everybody's like that, or so many like that, but it's always that it's some. Because uh, not everything pertains to everyone. But in this case, uh, for the ones that you're seeing that give up on the Ravens as soon as they make a mistake, um... I think part of it comes from the them being spoiled. Because as Ravens fans, we have been spoiled. We haven't been spoiled rotten like, like a lot of Patriots fans. You know, all them stuff. Anyway, um, <laughs> well, Ravens fans, they are certainly one of the, um, the more successful franchises over the years, especially in such a short amount of time, too. Um, and, and with Ravens fans, I think... Since Ravens fans are so used to the Ravens being so successful, especially recently, um, but they're so used to them being successful um, through the uh, the majority of the Flacco years and obviously having reached the highest high under Flacco uh, and then with Lamar them being just extremely successful, like extremely successful during the regular season playoffs, still got to work on that. Um, but I just that's where I think it comes from, because they're so used to success. So when there's a hiccup or when there's a mistake, when, when something, it doesn't go as smoothly, then a lot of people are like, oh, man, you know what? Oh, I'm tired of this. I just want it over with. I want this guy fired. I want this guy out of here. And that's how it can be. Now, again, that's only for some people because there's other people who, when they talk about somebody possibly being relieved of their duties, they talk about the Ravens going a diff in a different direction, whether it be with front office people or somebody uh, as a player, then there's some people that they notice patterns. They notice patterns and it's things that they don't want to continue uh, to repeat themselves. So they've thought this thing through. They've analyzed it. They've watched it. They've criticized it. They've went over it so many times in their minds and they've watched games and they've watched patterns and they don't want history to repeat itself in certain areas of the team. But as far as the ones that you were referring to, yeah, I think it's from just being spoiled. Next question came from my boy Jamari J. He said, hey, Graven, if Queen continues to play well, do we move the green dot back to the linebackers? I think for sure. I think Queen is getting that next year for sure. The um, reason I think that he didn't get it this year was because last year was an off season. And when I say off season, I don't mean the opposite of being in the season, but I mean the season last year was just off. Uh, so I think they will definitely be making that move uh, probably next year to where uh, he'll have a better understanding of the defense and he'll have more experience and he'll have had a full regular off season um, and then another season under his belt. So, yeah, I think he definitely gets that green dot. And then he also said, do you think Geno Stone, Ardarius Washington, Nigel Warrior and Brandon Stevens are more of a threat to Deshaun Elliott or Chuck Clark? I, I would say neither. I would say neither uh, because Deshaun Elliott and Chuck Clark, their jobs are not on the line or anything like that. It's not like they're barely hanging on to being starters or anything like that. And they have far more experience than all of those guys, all of them. 
Um, so they're the clear cut starters. So no, these guys don't pose a threat to any one of them. Now, if we talk in next year, next year things could change quite a bit. Deshaun Elliott, he's in the last year of his deal. For Chuck Clark, I forget where he is on his deal. Either he has one or two years left. I th- Oh, mm. I want to say I, I want to say one, but I'm not 100 percent sure, so I can't say. But either way, next year things could change. So we don't know if Deshaun Elliott is going to stay or go. All depends. We don't know if Chuck Clark is going to stay or go. It just all depends. So then these guys, especially Brandon Stevens, th- that's when he may be in competition uh, for a starting spot at the safety position. So hopefully this year he pushes those guys to the max, and then next year whether Deshaun Elliott stays or leaves. Or Chuck Clark stays or leaves. Whatever happens at the safety position, hopefully Brandon Stevens, he makes it really hard on everybody. Next question came from my boy, Lord Veli. He said, what to do, Brody? It's your boy, Veli. Haven't come through in a while, but man, I'm happy for your success for real. I've been faithfully watching since January 2020 before the playoffs and loving it. I appreciate that. Appreciate you rocking with us and sticking it out, man. Uh, he said, I grabbed Madden last night <laughs> on the Xbox One and it feels the same as usual. Can't wait to play on next gen and get all the new extra features. Immediately, I started a franchise mode with the 75 man roster because I've never been so excited and thrilled about 25 extra players I know aren't going to make the team. Uh, but I feel you. With Intel every day, uh, I've grown to appreciate our preseason roster for the simple fact that every player is going to be going all out because they want to be attached to the legend of Lamar's Super Bowl team. Uh, and I have never, ever seen this before or really even noticed it in NFL media. The only thing I hate about Madden is none of the rookies' faces are on the players. All right. Shout out to Madden 22. Maybe with that first update, maybe. But we'll see. Anyway, he said, now to my question or really statement. I picked up four free agent offensive linemen, but when it came to making cuts, uh, there were about 10, and I was really up. I had to let go or send some people to the practice squad. I didn't do any trading or nothing like that, just a pure generic roster. And the fact that we have 10 solid corners, 10 front seven studs, it's almost like, man, do I shorten the offensive line and, and, or do I shorten the wide out to keep a stacked defense just in case injury occurs? Uh, and just to be real with it, uh, or do I keep balanced numbers? You know, it's crazy. Do you believe that come cut day that the staff are really going to be scratching their heads in frustration of not letting go of so much talent or practice squad and players you know are going to be hot on the market and have great careers season's gonna be fire hold on tight and keep it clean appreciate that man um yeah i don't i don't envy them at all they are gonna have to make some very very tough decisions um to where they really assemble the best 53 man roster that they possibly can and something to keep in mind too that just because it's the 53 man roster for week one well for week one it doesn't mean that that's going to be the 53 man roster for week one because ravens they get tricky with it they do some manipulating with it they are very just they've been doing this thing for a while too because they'll have some people make the roster and you'll be like oh i didn't think they were going to make it and then that person may go on injury reserve that person may be released that person may be this or that they they they, they work that roster man so the roster that you see, the 53 that you see uh, when the, the roster is initially established, it m- might not be and probably won't be the 53 that you see going into week one. Next question also came from my boy Jamar. He said, Angry Raven, I feel like what people haven't noticed is the, wide, the Ravens wide receiver position group is supposed to be a battle through preseason, not just the camp. Uh, and when Trace went out, the Ravens changed the offense to a Lamar-like style, and Huntley has been thrown to only Oliver and Williams on checkdowns. If Roman doesn't take big shots against the uh, Washington football team, what are we going to know besides Hollywood, Watkins, and Bateman? Uh, and Wallace and Duve, they've been pretty quiet in camp. Had a few catches from Trace and one from Huntley. Prochet hasn't been trending unless in camp and before games. Uh, Moore, Victor, and Kane need this last game to show something, even though Kane has shown promises in camp oh still this is certainly a lot right here um yeah with, with duvenet and proche more so proche because proche he's been the talk of all off season and training camp and my guy uh bio laws and man he he made some great points and i was just like wow he took me back with some of them too he said with the ravens something that he's always noticed is that there's always somebody where it's just it's all this hype surrounding this player in preseason everybody going crazy about him in training camp they are the training camp hero training camp warrior that they just been killing it in training camp but then when the game comes on stuff gets real quiet you don't hear anything from him and with proche it could be because of lack of opportunities um, I've heard, I heard some people say, hey, in one of the games, he's getting open a lot. And I heard some people say in the other games, he wasn't getting open at all. I've heard it all. Um, but there are those players every year. And then he also talked about it on the flip side. There's also some players that you don't really hear anything about. You don't hear anything about them. 
But then when the lights on, when, it, when it's game time, oh, they go crazy. Like McCrary, like Williams. So we'll see how this whole thing really uh, impacts the roster. Because um, it's going to be very, very tricky. Uh, with Tylen Wallace, um, it's going to be tricky with him because I'm not sure where he's going to be on the depth chart. Because he's got a lot uh, in front of him. Um, and as far as Watkins and, and Hollywood, with the deep shots, um, really just with the offense. We, we, we're not really going to be able to really see the Ravens offense until week one. Because that's when everybody should be back. Sammy Watkins, I don't even, you know what, and really before week one in this preseason game. Because I've been, I don't know how the Ravens are going to play this preseason game. Because I was for sure thinking that Lamar is going to play in week uh Last week against the Panthers, I was 100% sure, like, oh, yeah, there ain't no doubt in my mind that he's going to play at least, like, two drives. Nope, nothing. Nothing. Um, so if he's going to play in the last preseason game, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to work this whole thing out, but we'll see. Uh, but we're not going to really get a glimpse of the full offense uh, in preseason. We're not. Um, so as far as the deep shots, I wouldn't really even be too concerned with that. Because remember, it was, it's been Tyler Huntley playing. It's been Trace McSorley playing. It has not been Lamar. has not been Hollywood. It has not been Watkins. Obviously, it hasn't been Bateman. But it hasn't been the regular guys that are, that are going to be out there. So the fact that they haven't taken many deep shots, I, I, I wouldn't really be overly concerned about it. And just to, with the whole offense period, I wouldn't be overly concerned about it. I would be a little bit concerned about it with the offensive line since more starters have been out there. But, hey, check this out. When you go from week one to week two, you see the improvements in the offensive line, especially in run blocking. They added another start out there uh, week two with Kevin Zeitler, and you saw all the holes that were getting created and whatnot. The offensive line, they just played better, so it's just going to take more time. Um, but I, I can't really overanalyze the Ravens' offense right now uh, in preseason. Next question came from Yahoo. He said, what's up, engraving the team, keep it clean. We're grateful to have you repping the Ravens like no other could. Uh, oh, <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because like no other could others could do much better uh, and they do but um no nah, I, I appreciate it man he said do you notice that NFL Network never shows Ravens preseason games when they have quadruple games to show uh but no Ravens am I overreacting I mean it is what it is man it is what it is and it ain't no big deal um as long as you get to watch it we get to watch it that that's all that matters uh and i mean ravens coming out the gate i guess they don't want to over raven it because ravens coming out the gate they got that first monday night football game uh and then the following week they got a sunday night football game and then uh three weeks later they got a monday night football game um so yeah people whether they like it or not they're gonna be seeing a lot of ravens this next question or questions will be a blended question is going to be the last episode on this episode of nfl questions from subscribers because it comes from my guy augusto v uh bullet atrex and chris p from the west wing so um first we'll start off with augusto he said yo engraving i hope you and your family are doing amazing and staying safe Appreciate you. Thank you. And yes, we are. Thank you for that. He said, I got a question regarding LJ Ford's injury. We all know he's a good linebacker whose absence needs to be addressed in the form of adding a solid starter or backup. My question is, should the Ravens sign KJ Wright? He's a nice veteran free agent who could help the Ravens out for a year so the linebacker room can stay as good as possible. At this point, free agents have immensely dropped their market value. And KJ is not too old. He's 32. And even though he isn't the best, he's a really solid player who is there at the right place at the right time. Combined with his experience, I think he could help the linebacker room. And shout out to Team Keep It Clean. One love, y'all. And love you engraving. I'll send y'all a hug. Hey, we send you a hug right back. There, there you go right there, man. But now nah, I appreciate it, Augusto. So KJ Wright. That's been a popular name recently. Now, let's go to my guy Bullet Atrex question. He said, Hey, Graven, love the videos. Appreciate you. With LJ Ford unfortunately getting injured, we might need a veteran linebacker to be on the roster. What do you think about signing KJ Wright, former linebacker of the Seattle Seahawks? Um, so with KJ Wright, uh, I, I, this, like I said, this question obviously came up a little bit. Um, and yes, he is a uh, free agent right now. Why his name is not on the list of free agent linebackers, I'm not sure, but he's out there. Um, and that is a very interesting name. We know that he made plenty of plays for the Seahawks back in his day. Uh, I don't mean to say back in his day like he's like some old man, old man, but <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> he definitely did his thing, man. He, he did his thing, and 
We wouldn't need him to come in. He ain't got to come in and be the KJ Wright of old. He ain't got to do He would not have to do that. He wouldn't have to be this all-pro linebacker or anything like that. No. But with his experience, he could help that room a lot and, and bring a lot of what LJ Fort did. He wouldn't have to be the fastest. He wouldn't have to be the strongest, even though he had that look, that grown man, grown man strength since he's 32. But he would just have to come in and be a leader, uh, be a solid contributor, and just be somebody that will be ready. And he would be somebody that will provide that experience um, that a lot of our linebackers just don't have. And somebody that could come in in a bind, come in in a pinch, and help out. So with uh, right, because right now our linebacking group is very, very young. I think Chris Board is the most experienced linebacker that we have, because it's Chris Board, Christian Welch, um, and obviously Patrick Queen and Malik Harrison. Uh, Tara Locke, I'm not sure what his status is. I know he's still hurt, and he isn't practicing. He hasn't practiced in like forever. Uh, so we'll see what happens with him, but. K.J. Wright would be a move that I would not be mad at at all. Uh, would he have to start? Would, would that mean that Malik Harrison wouldn't be the start anymore? No, it wouldn't mean that. It doesn't have to mean that. But it would mean that you would have somebody. Again, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Ravens were ready, but L.J. Ford, unfortunately, he got hurt, and now he's out for the year. So, again, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. You could bring in a veteran guy who got some great experience and – I, I, I think this would be a good move. Now, somebody else, who, <laughs> somebody else who was suggested, let's go to my guy Chris from the West Wing. His question, well, his part of this question. He said, Mr. Engraven, I'll keep it short this time. With the unfortunate injury to LJ Fort, do you think that EDC would immediately sign a free agent linebacker since that would grant him time to evaluate that signing against the current roster of linebackers? Or do you think that he will wait until the final roster cut down on August 31st and look for a roster cut casualty? Or will he do both? Ooh, that is a great question. Um, mm. Wow. See, and th this is why I love Team Keep It Clean so much, because we could all be thinking one way. Somebody may have presented something one way, but then somebody else comes in and they throw a curveball and they present something a completely different way. And it's like, oh, wow, that that's wow. But I think that um, I, I would think and this is my thinking, obviously not in the brain of EDC, but I would think that they would want to get somebody if they're going to bring in somebody, which I think they will, because John Harbaugh gave that talk today. Uh, in his press, shout out to Carter laughing in the background. He watching uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But anyway, uh, in John Harbaugh's presser today, he was like, oh, and I'm recording this on uh, August 23rd. Uh, but he was like, oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're confident in our guys that we got. And I was thinking, oh, okay, yeah, y'all definitely bringing in somebody now. When you say that, because you, you, you got to give a boost to your guys. You got to give a confidence boost to your guys. You got to let your guys know, hey, we rocking with y'all. We love y'all. And, and, and we really, we got confidence in y'all. We got faith in y'all. We, I know y'all got it. That's all about telling them. But then at the same time, it's like, oh, well, mm, yeah, we're still going to bring in somebody. Just to give us a little boost. Um, so I uh, I would think that they would want to bring in somebody now rather than later. Now, because um, if you wait till later, you could bring in somebody. And they can still do their thing. Uh, but either way, I feel like there's not really pressure on the Ravens to do. It's not like, oh, man, we got to sign a linebacker right here, right now. It's not like they have to. I think it would make them a little more comfortable going into the season if they did now. But, yeah, they could end up waiting because like with a guy with uh, K.J. Wright, who we obviously discussed a little bit earlier, he's out there. Well, if he's out there. Uh, again, I, I checked the free agent list. I didn't see his name, but I see people's talking about it. But I, I got to double check that. But um, if he's out there, he's still out there. And he's been out there. So uh, will anything change from now until – Another week? Maybe, but maybe not. Probably not. Because there's going to be a lot that, like, the free agent, the pool of talent and free agent is going to get, in free agency is going to get very crowded very soon. Because there's going to be a lot of guys getting added to being free agents. Because uh, a lot of cuts are going to have to be made. Because right now, we're going through baby cuts. It's, it's little baby cuts. It's baby cuts uh, was last week with just five people. Baby cuts this week with just five people. But then next week is going to be Oh, the the huge cuts. So that's gonna be um that's that's gonna be something right there. 
Uh, so I feel like with Eric DeCosta and them, I feel like it's really no pressure on them. Like they they could make a move now, but they don't have to. They could just end up waiting to have more of a selection of people. Uh, or they could be like, you know what? Let's go ahead and make a move right now. And let's get this thing done. So I appreciate you uh, bringing that perspective uh, to the conversation. And he said, by the way, it looks like Josh Bynes is about to be a cut casualty from the Panthers. Uh, and Patrick Onwasu is currently a free agent who was on injured reserve last year. <laughs> See, look at that. I like how um, <laughs> he said that, and he didn't say anything else. That was it. He said, sincerely, uh, Chris P. from the West Wing. That was it. He just left it at that. I, 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 <laughs> he didn't say, hey, let's sign them. Let's grab them. Let's pick them up. He didn't say he's interested. If they become free, well, if, uh, if uh, Josh Bynes becomes a free agent, nope, he ain't say none of that. He just said, oh, looking like Josh Bynes about to get cut. Peanuts out there. That's it. So um, with Josh Bynes, I don't think they would do a reunion. Um, but then when you think about it, it could make sense. And again, he wouldn't be a starter. He would not be a starter. And, and the thing with veterans, uh, when you sign a veteran linebacker, like a veteran veteran, um, you depending on, depending on your team, but with the Ravens, if they were to sign a veteran linebacker right now, same thing we talked about with KJ Wright, they wouldn't have to come in to be the starter. He, they would just have to be somebody that would come in and just be ready. Now, one thing about uh, Josh Bynes, he is obviously very familiar with the defense. He's familiar with the team, familiar with the defense. Um, so that would give him a leg up. Uh, and with Peanut, too. Oh, Peanut, same way. Same way. But with Peanut, I I mean, he, he left for more opportunity and whatnot. Uh, with the Jets, it just hasn't. Obviously didn't work out. We'll see what happens with, even with C.J. Mosley. I don't even know what the status of C.J. Mosley. I have not heard anything about C.J. Mosley recently, man. Um, but, man, it's just been it's been rough for both of them. I know C.J. Mosley, he got hurt the first year, I think. And then I think he got he opted out last year. And I, I don't know what his status is right now. Um, but that familiar, familiarity with Peanut and, and Josh Bynes, that would help them. Um but I, I just, I, I don't see the Ravens bringing back either one, especially Peanut. Ooh, I know we said we were logging off, but real quick, shout out to my guy Ravens, 8 Leet on Twitter, because he brought up some nice little information, some little tidbits about KJ Wright. He said uh, he started 140 out of 144 games. So he pretty much started everything. Eight playoff appearances. He's been a pro bowler. Two Super Bowl appearances. Obviously won the one Super Bowl with the Seahawks. Um, now, the rest of the stats, oh, he did bring up he's 24-15 and 15 versus all of our NFC opponents this year, 6-0 versus the Vikings, 3-1 versus the Bears, 3-1 versus the Lions. Now, that that part is like he obviously has had success against those teams being on the Seahawks and whatnot, um, but the Ravens, now he'll be on a completely different team, completely new system, if the Ravens even brought him in. But my favorite part about everything that he stated were uh, the Sammy Watkins approach. It reminds me of Sammy Watkins because, again, the two Super Bowl appearances, the one Super Bowl win, the eight playoff appearances. So when we talk about experience, we talk about experience. He brings that experience to that group. And when you think about Sammy Watkins and think about Ravens receivers, they don't have that experience. They got, play, well, they got playoff experience, but they, that's it. And just a minimal amount of it. But when you bring Sammy Watkins, he had playoff and Super Bowl experience. So that's important and that's big. And, and we got like a lot of guys all around the team that have playoff and Super Bowl experience. Special teams, Justin Tucker, Sam Cooke, Super Bowl experience. In the secondary, Jimmy Smith, um, Anthony Levine, Super Bowl experience. Defensive line, Calais Campbell, uh, Pernell McPhee, Derek Wolf, Super Bowl experience. Well, at linebacker, very young. And again, it's nothing against him, obviously, but he would bring that experience that could really just fine tune them that much where he could be like, hey, well, this is what we should do, or maybe it might be better if we did this, or maybe this would help us, he'll help our game that much more. This could really help us get to that next level. So that experience can make the world of a difference. All right, I'm out now for real. I love you. Shout out to Graven.